the feast of St. Thomas. And also welcome those joining our live stream service from your own home. The saints who are faithful unto death now dwell in the heavenly kingdom forever. As we celebrate their joy, let us bring to the Lord our sins and weaknesses and ask for his mercy. Most merciful God, So confess Christ as our Lord and our God, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. First reading this morning is from Thomas the Apostle, and it's uh, Habaguko. 2 verses 1 to 4. I will take my stand at my watch post and station myself on the tower and look out to see what he will say to me and what I will answer concerning my complaint. And the Lord answered me, 
Write the vision, make it plain on tablets, so he may run who reads it. For still the vision awaits his appointed time. It hastens to the end. It will not lie. If it seems slow, wait for it. It will surely come. It will not delay. Behold, the, his soul is puffed up. It is not upright within him, but the righteous shall live by his faith. This is the word of the Lord. The second reading is a reading from Ephesians chapter 2, verses 19 to the end. So then, you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone, in whom the whole structure, being joined together, grows into a holy temple in the Lord. In him you also are being built together into a dwelling place for God by the Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. So with you.
I speak in the name of the living God, who is both Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Doubting the truths of the Bible and disbelief, which is the next step, are almost considered normal these days. People seem to doubt everything whilst allegedly searching for the truth. Indeed, truth sometimes seems subject to the whim of individuals. Thomas often serves as example of the human trait of doubt. It is okay to doubt the truths of God's word because Thomas doubted the truth of the resurrection. So, can doubting the truths of God's word be good? Can we use Thomas's doubt as a defense of our own doubting? The answers to both questions, of course, is an emphatic no. In this morning's God, Thomas, the apostle who did not believe that Jesus has risen from the dead. He fails to accept the, sac- the testimony of the other disciples, wanting to see with his own eyes. For some reason, the lec- the, whoever designed the lectionary rather truncated our reading this morning, because were we to read further to verses 30 and 31, we would discover the following. Now, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. So if we consider both passages together, we discover that John writes about the great works of Jesus whilst he was on earth. He's writing about the work Jesus did in the presence of his apostles. And in comparison with all of that, the story about Thomas's disbelief occupies a very small place indeed. Jesus is busy doing the work of God. And within that great work is this brief episode when he convinces Thomas of the true facts concerning his resurrection. Jesus does this and John writes about it so that we also may believe. In the early evening of the day of his resurrection, Jesus appears amongst his disciples. Thomas is absent. And later the other disciples tell him, we have seen the Lord, implying that Jesus is risen from the dead and is alive. But Thomas reacts with stubborn disbelief as we so often react. He doesn't want to be convinced by the testimony of others. He wants to see for himself. Not just see, but also touch and feel the marks of the wounds. He needs proof proof that what the others have seen is not a vision or a spirit or something else of that nature. How is it possible that a real person with a physical body that can be seen and touched is in a room one moment and gone the next? How is it possible that a real person of flesh and bones appears and disappears while all the doors are locked To Thomas, it sounds as though the others 
have merely seen a vision or a spirit. But on the first day of the following week, the disciples are together again. And this time, Thomas is with them. Once again, Jesus enters while the doors are locked, suddenly appearing in their midst, saying, peace be with you. And immediately after this, immediately after this, Jesus comes to Thomas, bringing that peace with him himself. His purpose is clear. Thomas must be convinced. Thomas must believe that Jesus has risen from the dead. And to achieve his goal, Jesus tells Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands and put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not be faithless, but believing. What has Thomas said eight days before? Unless I see in his hand and place my finger in the mark of the nails and place my hand in his side, I will not believe. Seeing is just not enough for Thomas. It must be accompanied by touching and feeling. So in answer to his demand, Jesus tells him to do... Indeed, he is also told to feel the scar of the wound made by the sword that pierced Jesus' side. This touching and seeing proves that Jesus is fully physically present. The very same Jesus who was nailed to a cross and pierced with a sword. In his actions, we see the Jesus has for Thomas. Yes, of course, there is an element of mild rebuke in Jesus' actions. And this is just as mild as when it was experienced by the others from time to time. So why is Jesus not angry? Why is his rebuke so mild? Because it being so soon after Jesus' resurrection... The disciples are still in ignorance about the teaching of the scriptures regarding Christ's death and resurrection. They still don't really understand. Note also the difference between this incident and the way Jesus interacts with the two men on the road to Emmaus. The eyes of those two men are kept from recognizing the risen Lord. Jesus first teaches them how the scriptures speak of the suffering, death, and resurrection of the Messiah. In other words, before those two men can see and recognize the Lord, they must fully understand the prophetic teaching of the scriptures. They must believe the scriptures before being allowed to see and recognize. With Thomas, it is the other way round. First touch and see, then believe. So why this difference? Well, the answer is found in verse 24, which says that Thomas is one of the 12 apostles. These men were selected to witness everything Jesus did and said when on earth, so they could form the foundation of the church. In his first epistle, John writes that he and the other apostles proclaim that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, 
which we have seen with our own eyes, which we have looked upon and touched with our hands. You can read it in the first epistle of John, chapter 1, verse 1. In bringing Thomas to faith by making him touch and see, Jesus is securing the firm foundation on which his church will be built. There must be no cracks in that foundation. Jesus cannot allow one apostle to the others because this will totally undermine the others' testimonies. Imagine that only ten apostles proclaim the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. In that case, all disbelief would be based on Thomas's critical counter-testimony. But Jesus resolves his problem by revealing himself to Thomas as the risen one. Thus, the testimony of the witnesses becomes unanimous, something we see in Thomas's worshipping testimony, my Lord and my God. Having seen and touched, Thomas believes that Jesus is the Messiah, the Lord, the eternal one of God. Jesus' resurrection is clear proof that everything he revealed and said before his death was true. Of course, we cannot compare our own doubts with those of Thomas. Thomas was an apostle. He witnessed what Jesus said and did. But note that Thomas did not doubt God's word. He was simply ignorant about its meaning. Our situation, of course, is totally different. We live almost 20 centuries later. We have both the Old Testament prophecies and the New Testament fulfillment of those prophecies presented to us in the unanimous testimony of the apostolic witnesses. Interestingly, Thomas's testimony, my Lord and my God, became the basis for the faith of the church throughout the ages. It is a basis for the faith of us who do not see with our eyes or touch with our hands yet still believe. We believe because every apostle, every apostle, including Thomas, testifies that Jesus is risen. Therefore, he is, he must be our Lord and our God. He is and must truly be the Saviour of the world. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. Amen.
and looking for the coming of the kingdom. <coughs> Let us offer our prayers to God, the source of all life and holiness and goodness. Please let us pray. Almighty God, we pray today to give thanks for the wonders of our faith and for the time when Jesus called us to follow him. For that special time when we first believed in that call for the assurance we believe has brought to our lives. As followers of Jesus, let us play our part in spreading that calling to those who live in darkness. On that foundation, we pray today for our church the world, for those we love, and for ourselves. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Bless and guide Elizabeth, our Queen, and give wisdom to all in authority, directing this nation in the ways of justice, support, and peace, shaping our nation's policies. We pray for all in our church, the people of Christ, praying for our Bishop Norman, and Justin, our Archbishop, Debbie and David, our diocesan bishops. Please support them with all the church's reorganizations. We thank you for our spiritual leaders and pray for Father Inglis, Father Stephen, Father Robin, and Father Dave. Also, all those that preach and those that pray and are part of our church's service. Please support them in all their callings and their leadership on your behalf. We pray for Father Roy's work and Sandra with her ordination and works also in Jerusalem. Give us grace to dedicate our freedom to your services, that we in all creation may be brought to the glorious liberty of the children of God through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the Christian church and its diversity all over the world. Please support and strengthen all its people, wherever they may be. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you promised through your Son, Jesus Christ, to hear us when we pray in faith. We ask your help to keep us safe as we try to return to a normal COVID life and all its diversity and changes. Jesus, be with us all now and forever. Lord, in your mercy. Many people live in parts of the world where poverty and corruption are preventing access to vaccines. <coughs> Dear Lord, we ask you for your help and guidance to world leaders so that vaccines and medical help reaches everyone. We pray for people living in areas of the world where war, violence and hunger are still making their lives very precarious. Lord, in your mercy. We pray also for our church wardens, for Dean and Kevin. Be there with them both through our ongoing changes. Give them your influence and support, your guidance, your stability, and most of all, your unfailing love. We pray, gracious God, for those whom we love, family, friends, neighbours, wherever they may be. Pray for them in their situations, in their hope, their fears, their problems, and their joys. But most of all, we thank you for each one of them, for what they mean to us. Especially Father Dave, pleased to be there in his ordination, as he is in our hearts, dear Lord. Please, Lord, bless and support Father Kevin and Jen working for you in St. Peter's Church in Jaffa, Israel. Please be in their hearts, their thoughts and creativity. We pray for all those who confess your name. May be united together in your love and reveal your glory in the world. 
Lord, in your mercy. We hold in your presence all who are being cared for in this parish, and we remember Roy McMenamin, Gary Hickman, Andre Flower, Sue Bellamy, John Smith, Tony Whitaker, Barbara Carroll, Diana Hill, and Sylvia Sayer. And thank you for ongoing care and dedication given by NHS. May they all, all know your loving care and supportive presence with them and that you are their strength, healing, knowing your comforting joy of your salvation. Merciful God, be close to those who feel the pain of loss of a loved one, whether recent or at each anniversary passes, remembering. This Christopher of the office. and all, all those that come to mind at this time. According to your promises, grant us with them a sharing in your eternal kingdom. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Gracious God, we have laid before you our prayers again, and now we offer you our thanks and praise for all your love, blessings, and many gifts you have lavished on us. Help us to spread the warmth of your love to everyone we might meet online or in person, that we may serve Christ in one another and love as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. And rejoicing the fellowship of Mary, the mother of God, we greet her and say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among the women, and fruits of his room of the womb. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and the hour of our death. Amen. So rejoicing in the fellowship of St. Thomas and all your saints, we commend ourselves and all for whom we have prayed to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers. For the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We stand for the words of the peace. We are fellow citizens with the saints and the household of God, through Christ our Lord, who came and preached peace to those who are far off and peace to those who are near. Peace the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let's offer one another a sign of peace.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. You do come to us the bread of life. Blessed, Lord God, Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to set before you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will come for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be Lord, Lord. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that this our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise of the glory of his name, for our good and good of all his church. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, for thy ten eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. We rejoice in the glorious splendour of your majesty, for you have given us a share with Thomas in the inheritance of the saints in light. In the darkness of this passing age, they proclaim the glory of your kingdom, Chosen as lights in the world, they surround our steps as we journey on towards the city of eternal light, where they sing the everlasting song of triumph. In communion with angels and archangels and all who have served you on earth and worship you now in heaven, we raise our voices to proclaim your glory for ever praising you. same way after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread, 
and this cup. And we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup. So we in the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Catherine, St. Nicholas, St. Thomas, and all the saints. May praise and glorify you forever. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. So let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven. heaven. Hallowed be your name, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy, thy will, will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. this bread to share in the body of Christ. away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am the word that you receive. Let me say the word, and I shall be healed.
your Holy Spirit on the apostles with the wind from heaven and in tongues of flame, filling them with joy and boldness to preach the gospel. By the power of the same Spirit, strengthen us to witness to your truth and draw everyone to the fire of your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And together we pray, Almighty God, we thank, thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to, to live and work, work to your, your praise and glory. Amen. Amen. Morning, all. Um, you'll see on your um, on the notice sheets uh, that there's a, a funeral of uh, Father Joe Smith. It's up in London. Uh, there was a date missing from it. It's actually the, on uh, Monday, the 11th of July. So that's a week tomorrow. If anybody's uh, interested in getting involved with that. Um, the diocese have asked us to um, advertise the BCM Taster evening. If anybody's interested in taking a bishop's commission for mission, there are three categories that they're sort of flogging at the moment. There's children and youth ministry, creation care, and pastoral. If uh, anybody's interested, please come and see me, and uh, I can give you the contact details. Thank you. Um, and finally, Tomorrow evening is the ordination of uh, one of our own, Father Dave. Um, it starts at 7.30. Please come along, everybody. We hope for a massive support. Thank you very much. Thank you.